Hello guys, welcome to lesson number 70 in our series, Drawing Techniques for Beginners. Towards the end of the last lesson, what I was working on was this uh, section at the back, the actual tyre and the wheel. Now, I've spent about another half an hour or so just trying to bring up the value uh, because the, the important part about this section is that we get the highlighted areas so that we make this wheel look like it is uh, reflective. It's a, it's a very shiny metal. So what we're going to uh, concentrate on today is, uh, I've put this side by side actually, but I'm going to start working in this zone here now to the, the right of this air intake because what I want to do is I want to be able to start being able to balance out and see exactly where we need to add some more value. Now, I do know that we're going to need to add some more value around this bottom section uh, I can see that just by the way that it looks now, but that's going to become more apparent as we start to develop this. So we're going to be working in this area here um, and that's going to then bring in this sort of highlighted area in the centre. That's sort of our centrepiece, I would say, if we look at our reference image. Uh, the sort of the centrepiece for me is, is this reflection here along with the very bright reflections at the top. Uh, so hopefully... Once we start getting some value into those areas, we will be um, well on the way to being able to you know, have, a, have a very good idea of, of what this is going to look like. So without further ado, uh, let's crack on with this. I've sharpened my pencils. I think we're going to be mainly using the HB and the 2B in this zone. Um, before I start working on this panel here, down here, I definitely need to bring some value up into this area. So actually, a uh, slight change of plan. I'm going to go with the 2B because we've got some HB in there already. So I definitely need to, even if I just bring the value up uh, around this section towards the bottom, just so that I don't lose my way in terms of where this darker shadow, it, it is a shadow, it's I'm guessing this is this is an intake, so it's going inwards in towards that air intake, and we've got the light coming down from here, so that's going to be a shadow that's represented by that darker patch. So as long as I've got some value up to the edge of that, the edge of my shadow there, it means that I'm not going to lose my way with it. Uh, I hope you're all having a great start to the new year. Uh, it's been a it's been a, it's been a good one for me. So um, it's been nice to have a bit of time off over the new year and catch up with some of the uh, lovely work that you've been doing over on the group. It's been nice to see some people starting some of the earlier projects, uh, and it's also been nice. I think I've been in contact, and a few people have sort of stuck their head up over the parapet over the new year. People that maybe haven't commented very much before, or even posted any of their work. Uh, and it's been really nice seeing people having the confidence to either post their work or a question. Uh, I know a few days ago I had a, a brilliant live video question from Shannon and uh, she was struggling with a few ideas and, and just wanted a little bit of instruction as to where she may or may not be going slightly wrong. Uh, and I just posted a response to that and I think the reaction has been very positive. So if you do have any questions, I'm just changing pencil now. So I'm happy that I've got enough value in this area now, just so that I can start to define and get some definition into this lower section. Um, but like I was saying, if you do have any questions, there's any something that's bugging you or you don't feel like you're quite grasping a concept or there's a part of a, a drawing that you're unsure as to what it may be in a reference or something like that, I really do think that what Shannon did where she posted that live sort of video uh, asking the questions is probably the best way about going about it. Uh, she was a little bit apprehensive as to whether to post that or not. So like I was say, as long as we're not uh, posting spammy bits and bobs upon the group, I've got absolutely no problem with how we uh, how we run it. So I'm layering this HB in now and I can see straight away that we're going to need to go much, much darker. Uh, and that was one of the things that I was talking about in my video response to Shannon uh, a few days ago, that I actually took out a few of my old pictures 
Uh, and if you haven't seen that response, um, it's probably 15, 20 minutes long. So you can kind of skip through the the bits that you may have already seen or you understand. But I, what I discovered was I took out some of my old drawings from, one of them was from, I think it was July 2017. So two and a half years ago. And they were drawings that I was super proud of at the time. And I thought that I'd learnt as much as I was ever going to learn about drawing. But looking at them now, there was an awful lot that I could still improve on. And I actually started to just doodle for another 10 to 15 minutes on those drawings and bringing some definition out into the eyes. I would say that over the last year, my main improvement is, has been in the area of, of really developing the contrast. So as you can see with, with our car that we've done so far, it took us a long time and we've, we've really developed these dark tones, these dark values. And that was something that, that did take me quite a while to get my head around and also become brave enough to do. A lot of my drawings were that sort of washed out drawing that I talk about. You'll see them regularly and it doesn't matter how well your drawing's been planned out, it doesn't matter how accurate your anatomy is or whatever it is that you've been drawing, it might be a face or an animal. If you have this kind of wishy-washy look to it where we've got lots of mid-tone values in there a little bit of a light tone and nothing much else it really does take away from the realism so that was something that was nice and and actually i think i'm you know it, it did give me a a bit of an idea as to possibly make a, a couple of videos on that where what i'll do is i'll revisit a few of my drawings that i haven't touched for a few years and just show you where i would like to improve them now if i did go back to them or if I was redrawing them, the areas that I would deem to be in need of some more contrast possibly, some more definition in certain areas. Uh, so I keep banging on about it. Contrast for me has got to be your priority. Locate those light areas. Make sure you're reinforcing the darker areas. If this is the first time that you visited my channel, thank you so much for clicking on that thumbnail. I've been putting these videos together now, I think since the summertime really, and uh, I just wanted to try and build a small community of people that I was just trying to teach some of the methods that I've picked up on. Uh, you know, I was a, a beginner four years ago, three and a half, four years ago probably in the same boat as what a lot of you guys are on, which was picking up some copy paper out of your drawer or next to your printer and grabbing whichever pencil that you had to hand and just having a go at something and smudging pencils with your fingers, maybe using the tissue. And then you went online and tried to Google how to draw, which is, I think, most people's next port of call. And then you're bombarded with everything from charcoal drawings to Copic marker cartoon characters uh, to people telling you that you should use a blending stump, people telling you you shouldn't. And what happened, certainly in my journey, was I grasped some of the concepts and I messed around with things and... I fell into the trap of believing that the pencils, the equipment, things like that were, were the most important thing. So I would be forever trying to look for the best paper to use or the best pencils. And if I saw a brilliant drawing, let's say, on a Facebook post or an Instagram post, you know, I would be the one asking them which pencil brand was this, and where did you get it from, and what grade of pencil did you use for this and that and the other, and it uh, it could become very confusing. So I wanted to put these tutorials together to just hopefully give some of you a head start and not have to take six or seven months of experimenting with pencils and with this and with that and you know, the understanding and, and also to give you a framework of how to start your drawings off, 
whether it's a car or a, a pet portrait, how to then start developing realism. Uh, like I've said in a lot of my videos before, it was the, the realistic pencil work that really caught my eye. That was, that was what I wanted to do. That was what I wanted to achieve with my work. And I started out drawing lots of celebrities because I felt that with a celebrity, it was very easy for people to say to me, oh, yeah, that, that is such and such. Or no, I can't see the resemblance and whatnot. And for me, when somebody said, yes, I can see that that is whichever celebrity, insert celebrity name there. Um, it made me, I guess it motivated me to, to continue because if people were able to recognize what I was drawing, it meant that I wasn't a million miles away. So understanding things like light and how we can make an HB pencil on the paper look white and how we can make a area look dark by surrounding it with light and all of these little things, these little tips that I ended up having to pay for ultimately. I, I did various online courses and I've got absolutely nothing against that. It was some of the best money that I've ever invested, if I'm being totally honest with you, uh, because it did give me some foundations and some understanding of how to do things and what order we do things in. But I'm very aware that not everybody is in the situation where they can afford to throw hard-earned money at things and maybe they haven't got the time to do it. You know, it was very time-consuming for me. I think that for the first two years, I drew every single day. Uh, it, was, it was something that I did in the evenings, later on at night. And um, I suppose it's a little bit like a gym membership. You get a lot of people that pay for a membership or something, they never use it. Well, I um, thankfully, I, I, I wasn't one of those people and I, I did actually use these online classes and whatnot. So long story short, I've tried to piece together all of my thoughts over the last four years and do some lovely projects with you and it's been very enjoyable. If you haven't seen my playlist called Essential Pencil Skills, that should be above, round about now, there's a, there should be just a little icon that's moved across the top of the screen saying Essential Pencil Skills. Now, in that, there, that's lessons one to six. Obviously, like I said at the beginning of this video, we're up to lesson 70 now. In the Essential Pencil Skills, what I do is I go through all of the basics really of the techniques that I'm teaching. So talking about what the tapered stroke is. So I'm laying this value down with something called a tapered stroke. It's a series of lines that are stacked together. They're placed very closely together so that we have a value starting to develop. I talk about how to use your kneaded eraser, how light works. We draw some spheres and things like that. And I think that's essential that's why I've called it essential pencil skills so you can see now why I wanted to just bring the definition out a little bit in this upper area here because with this HB pencil now we've got a value that's relatively dark in comparison to the surrounding area um, and it would have been easy to lose that so I'm going to come back in with the 2B pencil now and I'm going to just start developing some of this darker shadowed area under there. Now, one of the things that we do learn in the essential pencil skills that we, we then go on to use throughout our work is this idea of developing patches and values with a series of pencils. So there won't be any one section on my drawing that is just one layer of one value of pencil. So you won't be able to pick out one, one area of this drawing that is just solely 2B. It will be a combination of 2B, HB, possibly some 2H in there. Even in the very lighter sections, what happens is we brush 
the value into the lighter areas. So the surrounding areas may have 2B in there, HB in there. And as we use our soft brush, which I've got just here, you can use a makeup brush for that. This is just a very soft, I've had this, I've had this for three years. Uh, I've never cleaned it. I've never had to do anything with it. And, um, but there's uh, uh, clearly there's some value in there. Uh, you can see that. So even in my lightest zones in the car, you wouldn't be able to put your finger on exactly just which grade of pencils in there. So it's understanding how we build the value up. It's not like a colouring book where we have a, a red pencil or a red felt tip and we just do one section red and it's a flat red. What we're doing with these values is we're building them up. We're never pushing on as hard as we could do with the pencil. And that was, that was something that I hope I got across in the live video uh, a few days ago. I, I showed you a, a, a small experiment where I took an HB pencil and really pressed on as hard as I could, sort of to the limit. And we got a very dark tone, we got a very dark line. Uh, but what that left us with is it left us with a lot of graphite shine. I damaged the tooth of the paper, which meant I couldn't erase anymore. I couldn't take it away. So that section of paper was ruined. And we had this horrible graphite shine. This idea of building the layers up using a very soft pressure, but nonetheless building it up over, over time and over different directions so not always just pulling the pencil in the same direction I'm actually turning the paper and giving myself an opportunity to move the tapered stroke in a different direction so we're getting this sort of crisscross pattern of lines and that builds us up a very rich value a very rich tone We get great saturation in the paper, but the, the beautiful thing about it is at any point I could take my eraser and I could go right back to a very light page. I've not damaged it. That then opens the, the door of opportunity for us to be able to get very subtle value changes. So with my kneaded eraser, I can take a, a few sections of a dark zone out and, and have some very slightly lighter patches. And as you look at your reference images, your eyes will start to adjust and see things like that. So this isn't necessarily all the same value under there. We've got darker zones and lighter zones within that. And your kneaded eraser working on this this paper in the way that we have been just allows you to take those out. It's been brilliant connecting with some of you over on Instagram as well. Um, go and check out at Artistic N1K on there. Uh, follow me, just let me know that you've come through from the group and I'll follow you back. And it's, uh, it's lovely to see people when I go onto the sort of the news feed part of Instagram and all of a sudden I see one of our projects pop up that somebody's been doing and they've uh, you know they've they've been getting some fantastic reactions from some of their followers and it's lovely seeing I saw somebody the other day that had recently drawn uh, our dog portrait and they were getting some fantastic feedback on there so go and check us out or check me out on Instagram at Artistic N1K. And like I say, give us a follow and I'll follow you back. Just make it clear that we're um, from the group. So we, we're, we're coming down into this section now and there's, there's some details in there. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm not going to worry too much about those details to begin with. I'm, I'm going to block out these dark rows. I can take those details out with my Mono Zero eraser uh, there's sort of a, I'm guessing it's a reflection of this. So up in here, 
we've got almost a reflection of this air intake. So that sort of honeycomb type pattern that we have in there. So I'm just going to build up a soft layer of 2B over this HB, possibly a 2H and an HB in there that we had from previous lessons. Again, just using this tapered stroke. One of the things that a few of you have been asking is sort of how fast should we be making these tapered strokes? Now, like I say, I've been using this technique now for many years, three, four years, two and a half to four years. So I have become slightly faster at it, but it's not about the speed. It's about the accuracy that you can lay these strokes down. Accuracy is more important than speed. And also the pressure. If you're struggling to keep the pressure the same, you're going to have one stroke that's darker than the next one, and the one next to that is darker than the previous one. And it's just going to be more difficult for you to blend the strokes together. So what I would really suggest you do is practice trying to get the, the strokes to land very close together and also really monitor your pressure, try and gauge the pressure, try and have a, I'm holding this very loosely, I'm holding the pencil towards the back end so I'm not bearing down on the tip of the pencil lead. If you're struggling to find accuracy laying your strokes down, then turn the paper slightly so that your strokes are hitting a different direction. They're working the tooth of the paper in a slightly different manner. Okay, so now I've got some value in there. I'm just going to use my brush because I want some of the value to come into this reflected area. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take out some of those details that we were talking about with my Mono Zero eraser. So here's our eraser. It's a mechanical eraser, a little bit like a mechanical pencil. And I'm just going to clean the edge. So we've got some... I've started with these lines in here anyway already, but I'm just going to take some of the value out in those two reflections. Uh, we then have this curved line in there. I can see just a couple of hints of a reflection, a slightly curved shape towards the back end at the top of this air intake. So I'm just going to remove them. I'm not being too worried about the exact look of them for now. What I'm doing is I'm just peeling back a little bit of this value from these areas initially so that I've always got a lighter value in these areas than the surrounding areas. And that's going to give me a map to work from. Okay, so we've got a, this is an odd, I know some of you are struggling with printing out these. Let me bring this up to the camera. So what we're talking about now is we've got this pattern in here that is a, a reflection of this. So it's very ambiguous. I'm not entirely sure how to describe that. We've, we've got some, I don't know, hexagonal square type shapes in there. So without being too precise and, you know, we're not, we're not looking for it to be absolutely spot on, certainly not in these initial stages. I'm just going to get some rough beginnings of what I'm kind of seeing. You know, almost like a, a C shape going away. And we've got some slightly more complex structures. And again, I'm using a soft, I'm using a soft pressure. 
I'm not pressing on too hard. Again, it's very easy to damage the tooth of the paper, even with a, an eraser. Uh, what happens with the eraser is we get a little bit too much pressure on and then it starts to embed, it starts to push down some of the value and the graphite into the tooth of the paper and that then becomes very difficult to remove. So two or three strokes of the eraser should do it and then we start getting down towards the white section. I've got a, an electric eraser as well that I sometimes use. Now I'm just going to brush the area that we've worked on and then what we can now do is we can really start to try and bring the value up in and around those subtle reflections that we've we've got and again I've, I've now got a kind of a a map for want of a better word and as I bring the value up around them without needing to knock the value back anymore in those reflective zones those those patterns I just start to make them a little bit more prominent Now, obviously, as we continue with our drawing, we're going to need to keep, it's what I call protecting the, the lighter areas. I'm, I'm constantly going to be needing to use my Mono Zero eraser to take value away from them because they're going to get muddy. They're going to get value spread around into them by the brushing and just by the, the nature of drawing, my hand going over them and whatnot. And this is an ongoing process. It's the same with building your dark values up. As values build up around your dark value, what you once thought was your darkest area of the drawing sometimes becomes a mid-tone. So cranking the value up in the dark areas is equally as important. But now we've got this initial layer down, this lighter area, it will be easy for us to then do that. Build the value up, take the value away, build it up around it, take it away, use the 4B, use the 6B, uh, and so on and so on. Okay. Now, we're nowhere near dark enough in this section. I'm tempted to use some HB again now in here. Now, th this is something that is almost counterintuitive to some people, but once you stop thinking about your pencils as being colours, if these were coloured pencils and I was, I'd got black down there already and then I was trying to come in with a light grey, I'm not going to be able to increase the value. I'm not going to be able to make it any blacker Coloured pencil is going to make it lighter. Pencils don't work in the same way. So if I put HB over the top of 2B, it doesn't make that patch lighter. It actually makes it darker. Because what I'm doing is I'm increasing the saturation of particles of graphite that are adhering to the tooth of the paper. The harder pencils have got smaller granules or smaller grains of graphite that break off from the tip of your pencil as you're drawing. And they work their way down to the very bottom of the tooth of the paper. And it's one way in which we get rid of this ugly white sort of speckled look. If I'd have just started with a 4B pencil in this zone, or a 6B, uh, you would absolutely see what I'm talking about. So I'm actually going over this area now that's already got 2H in there. It's already got HB in there. And as you've just been made aware, we were just adding some 2B in there as well. But I'm now going back over the area with an HB and I'm able to bring the value up even more. 
And it's, it's that process of layering, going up and down your different grades of pencil, that give us this lovely, easy to sort of blend together patch of, of value. So that's what I was talking about a little while ago, that there won't be a section on my drawing that is just one pencil. There won't be a section that's just 2B. There won't be a section that is just HB. So I can then rebrush. And then I'm just going to take out some of the value again in our reflected pattern. And the idea is rinse and repeat. Okay, so looking at our reference, uh, I think we need some value now in this area. So HB pencil, Uh, let's pop that that way around. Make sure it's all in focus. So um, let's just make sure we've mapped this up. So that's a lighter area. That's there. This is going to be a darker zone. So it's let's get some value into this. It's this sort of shadow. It looks like the shadow of a of the wing mirror. So I want some value in here first because again I'm working in the darker areas with my two uh, HP pencil I have here. making some very small tapered strokes in here, working in a slightly more confined space. And that's where right at the beginning, planning out these sections and taking your time and making yourself a very clear map really comes in handy now because it isn't guesswork now we know where certain things line up and where certain things are finishing and starting so i'm, I'm looking at this section there now Again, this is just an initial layer. <coughs> Got quite a nice dark value and maybe Maybe it's not as dark as I think it is here because the surrounding areas haven't got any value in there, but this HB looks like it's going on rather nicely, rather dark. But like I say, the look, the look of your initial value can be very deceiving. It all depends upon what is around your value. If it's surrounded with Dark values, it looks lighter than it maybe is. And if it's surrounded by light values, it can look darker than it is. So just be aware of that. I can remember starting some of my drawings a few years back and getting my first layer of 2H and HB and thinking, wow, that's dark enough, I finished. And being so happy that, you know, with what I'd got, uh, I wouldn't dream of leaving my drawing with 2H and HB in there now. They, were, they would be my lightest, lightest areas. I'm just turning the paper a little bit there, just so that 
I can take the tapered stroke across the patches that I'm just starting to develop there just to give me a more saturated value I like the idea that I like to 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 use the the analogy that what we're trying to do is we're trying to condition the paper initially with these harder pencils and it it's that conditioning that then allows the paper to take that darker value in a very smooth way later on. So this triangular area here is a light patch, which I have in there. Uh, so just making sure that I know exactly where I am and what's light and what's dark. So what we've developed here now is we've developed those, those darker zones, they are shadows. They're the, the shadow of the wing mirror it sort of ties up with this one up here but obviously as the car is coming out and then down this is going to be darker which it is than these uh, and that's just another way of us to have the opportunity to show that what we're, we're drawing is something that has different sides to it different planes different dimensions But then what we have is I'll go in with some 2B in these areas and then I can bring the HB into the lighter areas. But I think looking at the time frame, we've we've gone another half an hour or so on that one. Uh, so I'm kind of happy with where we are. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm, I'm just going to continue developing this section of the car here with my 2B, 2H, uh, sorry, 2B and HB in these areas. I'm going to start bringing a little bit of value into this and, and, and defining this area. We've got some reflections in this zone as well here. So once I've got a little bit more value in this area, I'm going to do the same process as we had over there, which was taking some of the value out with the Mono Zero Razor, just in that reflective pattern. And then hopefully by the sort of the start of the next lesson, we will be able to start bringing in some value around this front end of the car there and then maybe another lesson after that to, to get some good value in here and then we'll be into the sort of the, the final straight where we really start balancing values and bringing some of those finer details out but um, I'm happy with where we've got today uh, thanks so much for watching I do appreciate all of your support don't forget to subscribe to the channel uh, hit the like button it really does help the channel and it it helps people um, get to see uh, some of the videos and, and join the group and, and everybody sort of benefits from that so thank you so much once again don't forget find me on instagram uh, i'll follow you back it's been a blast uh, i hope you're all well and i'll see you over in the group or in the next video thanks for watching hit subscribe smack the notifications button follow me on facebook instagram and twitter